Hey, hi, how are you? My name is Felton. Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV. Today we're talking about Ninja. A job they got some changes that people are a fan of, some changes that people aren't a fan of. I personally like its current state. I think it's a lot of fun to play. Let's hop in. Let's just hop into how this job works, how you play it. Talk about openers and rotations. And at the very end of the video, as per usual, you'll see a demonstration of me beating up a striking dummy. Let's get started. Let's start by talking about the most important part of Ninja. And the point that's going to take the most time to go through is the mudras. So if you don't know what a, the mudras are, they are buttons that you can press. They have their own unique cooldown that is off the global, so they will always take 20 seconds to come back. And depending on what order you are hitting the mudras in, you will get different abilities. Most basic of which is Fuma Shuriken. You hit one mudra, you get a Fuma Shuriken. You hit... Your mudra is in the order of Chi Ten or Gen Ten. In other words, two mudras always ending on ten. You get Katon, which is an AoE skill. And if you do two mudras ending on Chi, so either Ten Chi or Gen Chi, you get Right On. Don't use Yotan. Don't don't use Yotan. Straight up, not a good skill. Uton, however, very important skill. There are two combinations that, that can be used to make it. Gen Chi Ten or Chi Gen Ten. The bottom line is two mudras ending in ten. I personally like having my mudra set up so they're in ten Chi Gen, and I just go backwards down the line, and that gives me Hutan. Set up your mudras in an order that makes sense. I personally recommend ten Chi Gen, because it works better with ten Chi Gen, which will make sense later. Set up your mudras in a way that makes it so that you can have muscle memory that will always play out the same way for when you want to cast certain mudras. For me, it's always 1-2, right on, 2-1, cat on, 1 by itself, fuma, 3-2-1, hutan, and then suiton, the next one on the list, is 1-2-3, ten chi jin. You can also do chi ten jin. Once again, personal preference, I recommend just going ten chi jin, it makes the most sense. Now, suiton has a very special effect and allows you to use ninja's biggest boost to any party, Trick Attack. Uh, I'm going to point something out that I often forget about, and I know a lot of people do as well. Trick Attack has a rear positional for bonus damage. It doesn't just apply the damage up buff. It also does damage, and it does more from the rear. So don't be afraid to use True North to make sure your Trick Attack lands with the most potency, or just to try and position properly. Say so Suiton is a button that has to be pressed, or used, which grants you Suiton, which can be used to apply Trick Attack. Usually you have to be hidden, which is you have to use the hide action. And then as you can see, now Trick Attack is lit up and I can use it. But if you use Suiton, you will get a buff that will allow you one use of Trick Attack without having to be hidden. There. While we finish up on Mudras, there are two lost Mudras that are very special that only come into existence at level 76 when you gain a trait that makes Kasatsu do different things. At first, Kasatsu is just a button that will buff the damage of your ninjutsus, which is what happens when you use your mudras in order. The casting of them is called ninjutsu. And at level 76, Kasatsu gets an upgrade, to where if you use Kasatsu and then you use Katon, it turns into Goka Mekiaku, which is just a really big AoE spell. The more important one that will mess with your muscle memory is that you also get the single target version of Hyosha Ranryu, which is actually the same as the casting for Hyotan. Remember how I said Hyotan's worthless? Well, it is. Hyosha Ranryu is not. This is your biggest damage skill. It is 1200 potency at base, which, because you can only cast it under Enhanced Kasatsu, means it'll always have that 30% damage buff. Which means it's not actually 1200, it's more like 1500 potency. It's one of the strongest hits in the game. It's a very important skill to learn how to use properly, to make sure you always stick under your trick attack, and to realize that after you use Kasatsu, and if you're level 76, you should be going Chi Gen or Ten Gen to get Kyosha Ranryu in place of trying to get a right on out like you do at earlier levels. That's the general basics of mudras. They're a little complicated. There is also Tenchi Jin, but I'm going to get into that in a second because I believe Tenchi Jin is better talked about when talking about your other gauge. So let's get into the other gauge and the skills that revolve around it. Let's really quickly just talk about Fleeting and Forked Raiju. They're very simple skills. You cast right on 
either by itself or inside of Tenchi Gen, you get a stack of Raiju ready. You can cast either Fleeting or Forked Raiju. Fleeting is melee ranged, Forked is a dash. They are higher potency than anything else you have as far as GCDs go. They are 560, even Phantom Kamatachi is only 550. Make sure that you do not overwrite your stacks, because if you use a GCD other than Fleeting or Forked, after getting the stack of Raiju ready, you will just lose your stack. It will suck. Do not do that. Keep in mind, the higher GCD damage of Fleeting and Forked Raiju is not worth sacking a Hyosha Ranryu. Even... Because hitting a Raiton with a 30% buff is nowhere near as much as a Hyosho Ranryu with a 30% buff. Make sure you're always using Kasatsu on Hyosho. It is not worth it to just buff a Raiton instead to get an extra Fleeting or Forked Raiju. They are very powerful GCD weapon skills. One of them even being a dash. I know there's a little bit of craziness going on around him. Some people don't like the way it's set up right now. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm just here to explain how they work. So the other gauge is the Ninki gauge. It's a bit of a strange name, in my opinion. It, it's hard for me to pronounce because I don't know what it is about the Ninki. I think it's the fact that my mouth has to use a lot of open sounds, but that's completely besides the point. So the Ninki gauge allows you to cast three different abilities. One of them is Bahavakaka, which is a single target, does 400 damage ability. The other one is Hellfrog Medium, which is a 160 AoE ability. Bahavakaka at single target, Hellfrog Medium inside of three plus targets. Pretty straightforward. At level 80, we get Bunshin, which is a really interesting ability. It is a self buff that summons a shadow to attack with you. And it does, if you're using your melee attacks, 160 per hit. If you're using ranged attacks, it's also 160 per hit. And if you're using AoE attacks, it's 80 per hit, and it doesn't have any fall off. Overall, Boonshin effectively adds up to 800 potency, as well as increasing your Ninki gauge per hit landed, which allows you to cast more Bahavakakras. As you can see, Bahavakakra is 400, 500 under a buff that we'll get to in a minute. So, Boonshin is double the potency in the first place, and on top of that, we'll give you 25 extra Ninki because of the 5 per attack, and it, it attacks 5 times. I hope you're following me here. So on top of the fact that it's more damage, it gives you half a Bahava Cocker cast. Boonshin has a 90 second cooldown, which doesn't line up with your trick attack on a 60 second cooldown. You still want to be hitting Boonshin off cooldown. It's much more important to be using it and gaining gauge and using the ability that it gives you at a higher level than it is to try and fit it under a buff window. It is a very powerful ability on its own that helps with gauge generation. I highly recommend just using it off cooldown. There is very, very, very few reasons to ever hold this skill. So let's talk about Tenchi Gen. And I wanted to put this under the Ninki section instead of the Mudra sections. Because there's really only two ways you're using Tenchi Gen. And one of which is you will go Fuma, you will use your arc. Before I get too in detail. Before I get to in detail, you can tell I'm doing this live. I apologize for stuttering over myself. I'm caught up in my own thoughts. I have a script next to me, but I try not to follow it exactly so it feels more natural. Like you're hanging out and chatting with me about the job. This two Tenchi Gen allows you to cast three different mudras in a row or essentially three different ninjutsus in a row, by using certain mudras. In other words, I push it, I will always use a Fuma Shuriken, and then I will use another mudra afterwards. But it will have comboed with the Fuma Shuriken, so it would have been as if I did ten chi, but it will cast Fuma Shuriken and then cast Raiton. And if I hit Jin afterwards, it'll cast Suiton. Now in AoE, you'll actually go Fuma Shuriken, Katon, Doton, which is usually done Chi Ten Gen, because then you hit your Fuma, you hit the AoE, and then you throw down the Doton afterwards. But that's only for AoE situations, and you really only want to do that on three plus targets. But it's still good to know how that works. Now, why this is under the section talking about Ninki is because of the trait we get at level 88, Enhanced Meisui. Meisui is a skill you get at level 72, which allows you to convert a Suiton proc into 50 Ninki Gauge. So that's a thing that you've had for a while. 
You've been using Tenchi Gen, you've ended with a Suiton, and you've had a Suiton sitting on your bar for 20 seconds. You will use Meisui to convert that into a Bahava Kakra. At higher levels, aka 88, you had a special version of Meisui, which buffs Bahava Kakra by another 100 potency, making it hit for 500 instead of 400. It's not a huge deal. The gist of it is it essentially allows your 2 minute burst windows to be stronger. I personally just find it to be an interesting way to buff Ninja's overall potency without affecting the job too much, making it rewarding to play your job properly and fit all of your buffs under the right windows. So, hopefully you get the gist of what Ninki and Mudras are at this point. It's a little complex. It's going to require just playing the job a bunch to get used to it. I highly recommend just hitting striking dummies, playing through dungeons, looking up guides, watching other people's guides, and just trying to figure stuff out that way. Ninja hasn't changed a lot since Shadowbringers, so Shadowbringers guides should still be partially helpful. Next, I'm going to get in the rotation and opener, but let's go into that. One last thing that I forgot to mention inside the rest of the Ninki portion of the video. Uh, at level 82, you get an upgrade to Bunshin called Phantom Kamatachi. Turns Bunshin into a weapon skill you push that gets you to cast an ability for 550 potency. It's very straightforward and simple. You typically use it on your trick attack. It has a, what is that, a 50 second duration, I believe. It lasts for a very, very long time. Um, so you essentially, no matter when you're using Bunshin, you want to hold on to that Phantom Kamatachi and try and shove it under your trick attack because it is 550 potency and that is just a lot of damage for GCD. Alright, so let's talk about the opener. I'm going to go through this really quick, so please try to follow. When you start up a fight, you will pre-pull, use Hutan. So you have your Hutan buff up. Then, if the tank will drag the boss far enough to the party so that it will stand in the Dotan, you will pre-cast a Dotan for the tank to drag the boss into, then you will hit hide. After you hide, when there's about 5 seconds before the tank fills the boss, you will go Tenchi Gen and have a Suiton ready to hit. You will hit Suiton about a, a second to half a second before the boss is pulled. Then in your first weave window, you will hit Kasatsu. Then you'll hit Aeolian, then you'll hit, sorry, Spinning Edge. Then you'll hit your Potion. Then you will hit Gust Slash, and then you will double weave Mug and Boonshin. Then you will hit Aeolian Edge. Then you will late weave your trick attack. Now by late weave, I mean as your GCD is spinning, you want it to be two-thirds done spinning before you hit trick attack to fit all of your skills in as much as possible. So after the GCD you will hit after trick attack will be your Phantom Kamatachi. Then you will weave Dream Within a Dream, and then you will use your Hyosha Ranryu, because you will have pre-propped Kasatsu, then you will use right on by going ten chi. Then you will use ten chi gen to go ten chi gen for can right on suiton. Then you will weave in Meisui. Then you will hit bleeding raiju or forked raiju depending on if you need to dash. You will hit one of the raijus. Then you will use bahavakakra. Then you will use one of your raijus. Then you will use bahavakakra again. Then you will hit spinning edge. You hit spinning edge here because it is. The only thing that you can hit to actually land inside of your trick attack. If you try and cast your last right on here, it won't land in trick attack. You'll have missed an entire GCD. Hit the spinning edge. A spinning edge under Boonchen is more damage than hitting nothing. After that spinning edge, you will cast another right on, and then you will hit another Raiju. That is the gist of the ninja opener. You will essentially do the same thing every two minute window, including the Phantom Kamatachi. You might not have Boonchen up for the bonus damage, like you normally would. However, you will always be using your two-minute burst window the same way. Your one-minute windows will be slightly different. And I want to point out that because of the way Mujas recharge, you will actually use your Mujas to cast Suiton probably 15 seconds before Trick Attack comes off CD to make sure that your Mujas are fully recharged during your 60-second window so that you will be able to hit all the damage you can, which is typically a Hyoshiran Ryu, two Raitons, two Fleeting or Forked Raijus, a couple of GCDs, and a Bahava Kakra. Your two minute window will basically be a redo of your opener. You'll see all of that happen inside the gameplay to follow. Well, that's it for the video. Hopefully this was helpful. I know Ninja has a really high skill floor because of needing to learn all your mudras, as well as learn your timings, and to learn the openers, because if you're off, then the entire party's not getting good advantage of your trick attack. Hopefully I was helpful in some way, shape, or form. If nothing else, I hope the gameplay that's to follow is going to help you. I personally enjoy Ninja right now, even if I don't get to play it a lot. But either way, thanks for hanging out and watching. 
you liked it, like it. If you want to see more, subscribe. Leave a comment if you think I did awful. Leave a comment if you did think I did good. Just leave a comment. Thanks for watching. I hope to catch you in the next one.